I'm Don Surrett. I'm back again with the second part of the GE 70 tonner install video. At the end of the previous video, you may have listened to the startup and said, hey, GE 70 tonner doesn't sound like that. Well, no, it doesn't. So now we're going to fix it with some programming. So here's our subject. Let's take it to the programming track and we'll fix those strange sounds and fix our speed control so it runs the way we like. I've already programmed the appropriate address. In my case it's 54 for the engine number and I did that using my Digitrack Zephyr DCS 51 If you're using NCE or another make of DCC, then you'll follow the normal procedure for changing the address. Once you've done that, we're ready to go program the other parameters. Well, I've gone to my computer, brought up Decoder Pro. I've made the entry for the St. J and LC number 54. DCC address is 54. It's a Tsunami plug-and-play GE diesel. This is found in the heading uh, Soundtracks Tsunami 2 plug-and-play or PNP. I'm going to select Program on the main. Hit Program. And the very first thing we want to do is go to the sound tab and come down on the left hand side, open that menu, and you'll find a list of possible prime movers. And we want GE Cummins. Select that. This is also where you would select the type of air horn you want. Uh, the default was a Nathan K3LA, which I found to be acceptable for the type of horn that I wanted. I did not change that. I left the bell alone, Alco 1 slow. You can change that to your own taste. Air compressor select. I opened that up and I went to engine driven. I left all the rest of these alone, came down and clicked write changes on sheet. That should give us the proper prime mover sound in the locomotive and give us an appropriate horn. Now we'll go on to the speed control. We now have a more appropriate prime mover sound for this little locomotive. We can move on to setting the speed settings and some other parameters. We can now move over to the sound levels and here you've got your master volume, air horn volume, bell, prime mover, air compressor, etc. Where I've set them now these are my personal preferences for my train room and yours may be different. I feel that the standard volume setting is usually way too high for my taste. Now if you run at a club or if you've got a much bigger room or more ambient noise you probably want these volumes to be higher. So this is where you make those selections. There's a few things I've turned to zero, dynamic brake, I don't believe 70 tonners had dynamic brakes. Steam generator volume, I've turned that to zero. Air conditioner volume, I know the one that I'm modeling certainly didn't have that. Toilet flush, well, I just didn't want to go there. Uh, fuel loading volume, I got that to zero. Again, this is all personal preference and you can use as many of these sounds 
uh, and make them as loud as you want. Next place I go is to the motor. I personally like a, a modest amount of momentum. On my particular application, I have the acceleration set at 30 and the deceleration set at 12. Again, once you've made changes here, go down to the bottom and write the changes on the sheet. Basic speed control. I don't use that. So don't put a check mark in here. Go over to speed table. This is where you can really make the thing run the way you would like it to run. I find most locomotives run way too fast and particularly this Bachman 70 tonner had two speeds. Stop and really fast. I started by moving the right hand slider down to a value of 100 came down and clicked on match match ends and then put a check mark in use speed table make sure that speed table selection is on 28 point custom speed table and come down and write changes on sheet let's take a look and see what we got The crucial step in setting DDE are CVs 503, which you can find in the CV table in Decoder Pro. Scroll down, it's under Index 2, 503. And the instruction says, with your locomotive on level track, enter a value of 255 in a CV 503. This calibrates the nominal low speed level. Then increase your speed to a moderate speed for your layout and enter a value of 255 in a CV 504. This calibrates the nominal high speed load level. Once we've written those values, we now should have the dynamic digital exhaust set to be sensitive to load. We're running light when the locomotive senses resistance, going up a hill or pulling more cars. We'll hear the prime mover rev up and get louder. Depending on the sensitivity you've set to the throttle, you'll also notice that when you increase the throttle, you'll get the sound of the prime mover revving up. And as the locomotive attains some speed, the volume drops down, giving us a very realistic effect. There's lots more things that you can program in Decoder Pro. You could probably spend the whole day here programming things like lights, 
the various automatic sounds, the sound levels of the various appliances. And you probably have so much fun that you won't leave it alone. But I think at this point I'm going to leave mine alone. I'm happy with what I got here. And this has taken an inexpensive, almost train set quality locomotive and turned into a really delightful scale model. Well, that should be enough to get you started. So now it's time to go put our little horse to work. 